Hey you guys, it's Katie from the blog and podcast nowthegrowfamily.com and today I'm going to take you through a day in the life of a mother of five. It might be a little bit more like a week in the life because every day is a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to go real in depth in our Saturday routines or our Sunday routines. Saturday is Sabbath for us and then Sunday, the Lord's Day, we have a different set of routines. And if you guys want to hear what that is, then let us know down in the comments below. My day has kind of time blocks flowing through it and I don't have things on a strict time schedule aside from sleep times. So those are pretty straightforward. What time I get up in the morning, what time the children go to bed in the afternoon for their afternoon nap and the house, house is quiet and then what time the children go to bed in the evening. Those are pretty cemented times throughout the day. The second most structured time in our day are meal times. Those are pretty generally within like half an hour of each other. And then these times just flow in between those times. Okay, that was like confusing, so I'm gonna dive in and you guys are gonna see what I'm talking about. So I base what time I get up off of my baby's nursing schedule. So if he wakes up at 4.30, then I get him and I will nurse him in bed and get up at five o'clock. But my fallback time is five o'clock. That's when I actually have an alarm set. And so I will wake up at five o'clock if he hasn't already woken up and nurse at that time and get out of bed, get my clothes on for the day, my exercise clothes, and be out exercising by 5.30. That's kind of my goal. So I love waking up really slowly in bed uh, to nursing my newborn. And then once I'm up and out of bed, my morning routine, that's my first time block of the day, and that's my personal time. And two things happen during that morning routine six days a week. That is, I work out, and this might be a variation of Pilates or a, that's what I did this morning. I have workout videos that I do with weights. I might go for a run. As the weather is getting colder here, we're going to get our gym subscription back, so I might end up going to the gym. But some form of movement is what I like to do in the morning. And then the second non-negotiable for me in the morning is my quiet time. And that is where I read scripture. So I recently got a Spanish Bible and I've been trying to read a chapter in Spanish and then the chapter right next to it, it's like English and Spanish, um, read it in English. And I tell you what, it makes a lot more sense in English, but I just kind of want to get in that flow in my mornings. So. Those are the two non-negotiables. Now my days look a little different based on, or that morning routine, based on what is happening the rest of the time throughout my day. So on Mondays, those are the days when I record, like today in the afternoons. And so I don't have as much time to do school with the kids. So I get them up early on that day and spend the last part of my morning routine from 6.30 to 7.30, or sometimes it's only from 7 to 7.45 or something like that, doing their math. So we get that out of the way before the rest of the day starts. So that's what I chose to do during that extra time in my morning this morning because it's a Monday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have my Spanish classes in the morning where I talk with my Spanish instructor. And so that's the bonus activity I do in my mornings, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And right now I'm not currently doing this, but again, once it gets cold outside and I can't go for my run, I will go to the gym either Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday. Those are the days when I have more bandwidth in my morning routine. So I'm able to take the extra time to drive to the gym and drive back and all that stuff to go for a run. So the children are up at 7.30 in the morning and that, well, 
they're up any time before then, but that's when they come out of their rooms and they help me make breakfast. This is a really fun time. We have a slow breakfast time. We all love breakfast. I love to make breakfast. I think it's because there's like no recipes involved, so it's it doesn't take a lot of brain power. And so the kiddos help me. I almost always have my two-year-old on the counter helping and the other kids love to pitch in too. We just visit and I love that time in the morning. It's really slow and it usually ends around nine o'clock. So after, like during our actual like sit down breakfast time, I go through a variety of things because I have all the kids sitting around the table and quiet and happily eating. So Depending on the day, we always read one of our read-alouds. So right now we're reading D David Livingston in the morning and The Railway Children. The autobiography, or it's a, it's a biography of Ulysses Grant. And so those are the three books that we rotate through. And so we're, we read that in the morning and then we alternate between memorizing catechisms, poetry, scripture, and hymns in that morning breakfast time. So after we finish breakfast, I am not eating during this time. I started intermittent fasting when I was pregnant. I have a few videos on that and I can link them down below, but it has been very helpful ever since I started doing that to not eat while the children are eating because if I just tell myself that I'm not going to be eating during this time and I'm going to be reading or facilitating something, then I'm not bummed out that my food's all cold at the end. So it works great. The kids clear their dishes. They go and they have outside time at this point. And I make myself breakfast. I usually eat around nine o'clock in the morning, um, eggs and a smoothie or an omelet. Sometimes I eat a bowl of oatmeal. Uh, and so I make my own breakfast. I also, at some point in this morning routine, the baby has gotten up somewhere in that breakfast bubble and I've nursed the baby while doing just whatever else I'm doing. So he's up with me, the infant, and usually in his bouncer, very happy because he's full. And then I just go ahead and while the kids are playing outside, I clean up breakfast. At this point, I don't have them help me clean up breakfast because I'm happy that they're playing outside. Uh, happily, that's more important to me. And then I try to get something prepped for food for the rest of the day. So this morning I did my sourdough starter because I knew I would be baking bread later on in the day. Um, I also prepped some food for dinner. It's a great time to thaw out meat, um, boil some noodles, something like that. And again, while the kids are engaged and the kitchen is kind of dirty, I, I make do something to help with dinner that evening. Uh, today I like fed my starter, put my makeup on, got dressed for the day, and we brought in groceries because I'd ordered groceries the night before. My son and daughter asked for extra jobs, so I actually got a lot of stuff done because I was able to clean out my fridge, my son cleaned my baseboards for a dollar, and my daughter put away all the groceries for 50 cents. So I call that money well spent. <laughs> The breakfast block ends when the baby goes down for his morning nap, and that is the beginning of our morning school block. So roughly this is 9.30-ish, but I really play it, I don't stress about the time. I just call the kids in from outside and drop whatever I'm doing as soon as the baby gets drowsy and goes down for his nap, because this is school time and I want to take advantage of that time. So during our school block, I take the six-year-old and five-year-old and we do math together and then we do some kind of penmanship, um, cursive lettering or spelling or, you know, something like that. And then I also take my kindergartner, my four-year-old, and I have him write his numbers or go over his letters or something really basic. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes with him. And that is our little school block at the table and then we move into the living room and meanwhile the toddler has been playing with something on his own like mag tiles or trains or something like that then we all collect in the living room and we do our a becca bible story so i've mentioned these a lot before in our screen free activity video i can link that down below but essentially i just hold up these big picture cards and I've started reading straight from the scripture uh, while holding up the cards. So it doesn't come like with the passages or anything. Well, it does if you have the workbook, but I don't have the workbook for some of these. And I just started ditching the workbook and reading straight out of the King James Bible because I really like the kids hearing straight from the scripture, but still hearing, like getting the added visual of the stories. So the children love that time. They really look forward to that. And at the end of that Bible story, that is the end of our indoor 
seat work school time. And that is roughly, that roughly ends around 10.30 to 11. Outdoor time. I might go with the kids um, out on a walk and we'll enjoy. That's what I did today. I got all the kids and we all went on a walk together. We went to the park. It was really fun. We ran into friends and ended up hanging out for an hour and a half there. Uh, if I'm going to the park on my own, then I bring a book and I read during this time. I read rain, snow, heat. It doesn't matter if we're at the park. I am reading usually while the children are playing and it's great because the kids are back in school. So it's really easy to keep an eye on my own children because we're some of the only people there. And then after that, or, or I phone call, you know, I talk to my mom or I talk to my sisters or something like that. So that's kind of an enjoyable thing for me to do. If it is a project day and I am home, this is when I will, you know, do a load of laundry or maybe I'll meal prep dinner then if I didn't get to it in the morning or, you know, something extra. Um, I'm looking here at my list. Yeah, organization, clean the fridge. You get the you get the picture. Home projects uh, will happen in that morning block as well if I choose to not go on a walk with the kids. Lunch is between noon and one. It ends at one, which is nap time. Again, we might come home and eat at 1130 if everyone's hungry, but that ending time is one at nap time. And so at lunch, I sit down and I pick one of the read alouds that we didn't read for breakfast in the morning and I read that to the children while they eat. I usually grab a smoothie or something right after they're finished eating, uh, eat leftovers or something like that. And then the kiddos go outside to play while I clean up the kitchen and yeah, get ready for nap time. So at one o'clock, that's the nap time block. This nap time block is kind of has a dual purpose for me. I get to do things I enjoy during this nap time block. And the first part of that is reading with my children. I really enjoy reading one-on-one. -on -one. It's a quality time for me and them. And I just, I just love it. So I start with the four-year-old because he takes a nap for the second part of this nap time. So at the first part, I do his little reading lesson or I read him a book and then he goes down for his nap. The toddler and the baby are asleep at this point. Um, everyone goes down at one. And then my big kids, my five-year-old and my six-year-old read to me individually and take turns doing that and then going back in the room for quiet times. Sometimes I really love to do school with my kids. So sometimes, sometimes I have them come out and we drill, you know, multiplication tables or play a game, or I have them work on paper sloyd or geography or something else that I want to do with just the big kids when it's really quiet. Um, and sometimes I use the second half of that two hour nap block to work on a project, to write, um, to plan a video or something like that. But it's kind of like my hobby hour, either <laughs> with the kids doing some of their school that I enjoy doing or doing something that I really enjoy doing for myself. The afternoon block is another outdoor slash project block. So if I already took the kids to a park in the morning, then I will often just have them play outside after they wake up from naps. I love to read picture books to them when they wake up from naps. I think that's a fun way to just help ease the transition into uh, the wake time. And then the children all go outside. This is rain, snow, whatever. And I will work on projects inside. So this is when I get my house projects done if I didn't do them in that morning block. So I kind of alternate. If I did do them in the morning block, then often the kids and I will get all bundled up and we'll go out, we'll go to a park during this time. The dinner block is essentially, we finish dinner around 5.30. I love to eat early. I would love to finish at five if we could, uh, but we try to eat around five or 5.30. And then Elisha and I will visit and tag team cleaning up. Sometimes we'll do baths for the kids. We almost always go for a family walk after dinner. This just allows Elisha and I to visit again um, while the kiddos are having fun and getting their energy out. They love it too. So it's a win for all of us. And then we flow straight into the evening routine with the children, which we have done videos on before. Uh, the kiddos go to bed at seven o'clock and then that is the evening block of after the children are in bed. 
So after the kiddos go to bed at 7 or 7.30, you know, if they're coming out to get drinks and all that stuff, um, I will prep my day for the day, the next day. So I'll prep my to-do list. Um, Elisha and I sometimes will sit down and plan. So we have different things that we do every night, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Elisha and I work on things together. Tuesday night is our home group night. Um, Thursday night, Elisha and the boys are gone at a father-son ministry. So Lucille and I meal prep. And after she goes to bed, I'm usually picking up that meal prep. Um, but this is just a time where we get to, I get to work on projects either individually or with Elisha. And these are things that are just future projects that we really want, um, that we really enjoy. And then I shower while Elisha holds Lionel. I like to shower while he's awake so that as soon as he's asleep, I can go to sleep. And then usually around 9.30, I'm in bed, I nurse and go to sleep. So that is my day in the life. I get it was a lot <laughs> as far as a lot of different days and a lot of different variations. But that's what I love about being a stay-at-home mother. I love the variation that it provides. I love that I can have structure to my day, but it can also flow how I would like it to flow within that structure. So anyways, I hope that was helpful for you and it gave you some ideas. You can click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, you could click the thumbs up button too. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next Thursday. Bye. Hey everyone, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about our online music academy called VoteBergMusicAcademy.com. Katie and I actually started this online music academy seven years ago, and over that time we've been able to see thousands of students go through our courses and learn how to play the guitar, the mandolin, the fiddle, the piano, the ukulele, and bring music into their home. And we really curated these lessons so that you're able to learn with your child or you're able to learn by yourself and then bring music into your home and play with with your kiddos we even have it so that you can you know subscribe to one course and have three of your kids take the same course so it's really cost effective and you're able to go at your own pace and bring music into your home go to vopermusicacademy.com and check this out okay listen up this is where it gets really good if you enter the coupon code youtube at checkout you will get 10 percent off each month's payment because it's a subscription, it's a reoccurring payment. So if you put that code in, then it's 10% off each month. So, I mean, that can really add up over time. So bring some music into your family's home. Go over to VopergMusicAcademy.com. I'll link it below. And you guys put in that coupon code and go learn how to play some piano, guitar, fiddle, mandolin, ukulele, your choice. <laughs>